that uh, today we're going to, first I'm going to provide you with the cross migration information, and then we will open the floor to answer your questions regarding specific migration questions concerning your course. I know many of you may have lots of questions. Uh, uh, I, I would like to ask you to hold your questions until the end of this session. We do have time for you to ask a question. You can also type your question anytime in the chat window. The Learning Technologies Group has been working with Canvas to bulk uh, migrate the courses taught in the past two terms to, to Canvas. As you, I think most of you already got an uh, announcement from us uh, sent out last week. All your winter content and spring course content from the past two years have been copied over to Canvas. We also have created a space for each of those courses in Canvas. Now you can treat those spaces as your master space uh, to get started with the content development. The spring 2013 and winter 2013 course spaces uh, have already been created for you. I think you all should have, have access to those spaces right now. And so you can import content from your master space to the term based space before the term starts um, next term. So let's talk about what has been imported into your Canvas space and what has not been imported requiring um, your uh, requiring manual migration. So what we have imported all your uh, what we have imported to Canvas space are what you see on the slide. We have imported all your Blackboard assignments created with using the Blackboard assignments tools. So if you have any of those assignments, they are already there. And we also imported all the quizzes and surveys and also all the course documents to Canvas. So all those four things to Canvas. We also imported all the gradebook columns. You are going to see all those gradebook titles inside your Canvas uh, space under the assignment link. I'm going to show you this in a moment. What happened to be imported? All those things need you to manually set up in Canvas. Because there's a, no direct correlation between those two learning management systems in terms of content organization, uh, Canvas space will, will, will then require re rebuilding. So rebuilding includes all, 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 all of those following things, including setting up your course structure including linking files from the files uh, in Canvas, including adjusting quiz settings, publishing your quiz, publishing course, setting up um, all those uh, discussion forums, and cleaning up gradebook, etc. Another thing to note is that the bulk migration does not import all the third-party content, such as your campus pack wiki blog content, or your Wimba voice content and Wimba classroom sessions. You have to manually uh, import those archives and import the campus pack wiki into your Canvas uh, space. Here's our uh, migration timeline. As you can see from this timeline, for those of you who are going to teach winter spring 2013 terms, your winter spring course content is already now in Canvas. I'm going to show you how to access them in a minute. For all organizational and non-term based spaces, your content will be copied over on November 19th, which will be in two, two weeks. 
And you are also going to get an email announcement from us when the time comes. So uh, on, the, on that day, November 19th, you, are, you should expect an email from us. For all the summer and the fall faculty who are going to teach next summer or next fall, here is the schedule. For the summer 2011 and 12 spaces, we are, we are going to migrate those uh, content located in those spaces in next year, uh, during the mid-January. For the content located under uh, those spaces for 2010, 2011, and 2012 spaces, we are going to migrate your content in middle of February. But if you want to start earlier in Canvas, uh, if you, you don't want to wait that long uh, to get started to rebuild your content for the summer of fall teaching, you can always move your course content on your own anytime and will always be able to access support from us. Now, let me show you how to access the migrated space in Canvas. To go to, to log into Canvas, you go to this ngm.umd.edu. Once you are on this page, log, click Log to Elm on this button to log into Canvas. And then move your cursor over uh, Courses. And then from this drop-down menu, you are going to see um, a list of courses listed. You are going to see not only your term-based courses, but also your all the all the courses that have been migrated, imported from Blackboard. All your course files uh, are located imported from Blackboard are located under under this files link. And then in, if you click that link, you are going to see a folder called Courses, uh, Course Files from Blackboard. And this folder contains all the documents from your Blackboard space. Now, there are several options. All those files, you know, all those following files uh, have, haven't been able to import it to your Canvas space. And one case is that if you have any document located under my content folder inside your content collection, those documents are not imported to Canvas because my content folder is your private folder associated with your directory ID. We are not able to get into that folder. I'm going to show you how you can manually um, import those files to Canvas in a minute. Another type of files which have not been imported are those files which contain all those illegal characters, such as if you have any files uh, with illegal characters uh, in the file name, uh, such as uh, um, question mark, pound sign, commas, all those illegal characters, they are not imported to Canvas. Another case is that if you have any files with a file name exceeding 60 characters in length, we are not able to import them either. So if you have a long file name, those files are not imported to Canvas. You have to manually import all those three types of files from your Blackboard space to Canvas on your own manually. Next, I'm going to show you uh, how to manually migrate your document, import the document from your uh, content collection under my content folder to Canvas. So I'm going to share my desktop now. Okay, so here's my um, 
my my black box space. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my content collection. I'm going to access my private folder under my content collection. So you see there are two folders here. My my content folder and the course content folder. All the documents located under course content have been migrated to Canvas. So you don't need to worry about it. The files located under course content folder. Now the issue is with this my content folder because it's private, we're not able to access that. You have to access your content, my content folder on your own and manually do that. Now here's how you do that. So if I click my content folder, the same way as if you want to manually migrate your content from from the content uh, collection, you are going to use the same approach I'm going to demonstrate. Okay. So I'm going to see my director ID here. So I click this one. Now, you see all my files, I have three folders. I have all those individual documents here, PDF, pictures, audios, videos. I have everything under my private folder under my content collection. Now, how I'm going to move this to Canvas, the first thing I I need to do, you, you, you are going to do, is to create a folder under this uh, directory and then move everything to a folder. So I'm going to create a folder. You see there's a button called folder, okay? So I'm going to create a folder inside my, con my content. So I'm, going, I'm going to call it file to canvas. So my next step, I'm going to move everything to this folder first. So I organize everything into one folder. I click submit. Now you see a folder called Files to Canvas. Okay. And then I'm going to just check everything I want to move to that folder to Canvas. So I want to move all the folders. I want to also move several PDFs. I want to move this Word document. So I'm going to move all those files and folders into a single folder called Files to Canvas. Now, this is what you are going to do. So check everything first, and then click a button on the top. This button is called Move. You can copy it if you don't want to lose the, uh, you, you, you want to look file still locate still appearing on this same location. You can copy or you can move. Now this time I want to move it. So I click move. So this is you see all those documents and folders I just checked, right? So I'm going to define select a destination folder. So I click browse. I'm going to browse to that folder I just created, so I click this file to canvas, okay? So I, I'm going to move everything to that folder. So I click submit. You see here, I'm going to move all those files and folders into a folder called file to canvas. And then I click submit. You see, all my folders are gone, right? All my, the files I just checked are also gone. So let 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 me click this folder to see whether they are all moved. I click this folder, see they are all here. So let me get back to my root level. So here's that folder. Now the next step, I'm going to move this folder to my desktop so I can I can import into Canvas. So I'm going to move this folder to desktop. So this is how you do it, okay? So you need to check this folder and then scroll to the right. You're going to find a drop-down menu, click on that arrow. So there's a button called download package. So I'm going to download that folder as a zip package to my desktop, to my local drive. So I click this download package option here, and then 
click this Go button. Now, immediately I click Go, you see, it asks me to save that zip. The zip will be named using your directory ID, dot zip. So I'm going to save this zip. This zip contains everything in that folder. So I just click OK. Now it is saved to my desktop. So let me go to my desktop. Now, here is that folder. You see, on my desktop, I have dreamyoung8.zip. So let me open this zip folder to see whether everything is there. See, there's a file to canvas. That is a folder I just created in my in the content collection. So let me open it to see whether I get everything. So everything is here, right? Now, you don't want to unzip it. Canvas will unzip it for you automatically. So let me log into Canvas. I'm going to use my Google Chrome. ngm.umd.edu. This is your this is the, the, the page you are going to go in order to log into Canvas. So log click log to Canvas. I'm going to type my director ID and password. So under courses and groups, see I have all those um all those courses I'm teaching. Now if you don't see your space, if you don't see the course you are teaching, for example, your, your uh, 2013 courses, there is a, if you scroll down to the end, there is a button called View All Courses. You are able to locate any course you are teaching from, from, from this, once you click View All Courses. Now this time I'm going to go to, how about English 101. Now, all the files are located under files link. So you, you, want to, you want to import everything to this link. This file is like your central file storage location in Canvas. Now, I'm going to drag and drop. You can add this um, from import the zip file from here. You can you can use this button, import a zip. If you are using Google Chrome or Firefox, you are able to drag and drop directly from your desktop to to the file uh, location here. So let me click this button. So I'm going to choose that zip that zip file I just uh, downloaded to my desktop. Let's see, where is that? Oh, not this one. Oh, it's here. So here's my zip. So just upload. Now Canvas is uploading the zip. Now it's done. You see, once it's done, Canvas will automatically unzip everything for you. So here is my my files, everything is there. Now, once you get your files here, uh, so you also see a course files from BB, which we bulk migrated for you. You can get started rebuilding your uh, your Canvas space. In Canvas, you have we have all those uh, course links here. You can reorganize your files, the course structure using modules or pages. Um, Zapmatic is going to show you all those training uh, opportunities and support opportunities we are we are offering uh, in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to show you where are all those quizzes. If you go to the quiz, all the quiz we have import for you from Blackboard are located under under a link called quizzes. If you click this link, you see all those quizzes. Now, maybe you already noticed all those quizzes are, are unpublished, which means your students are not able to see them. You have to publish those quizzes first. 
in order to uh, make them available. So once you see all those migrated imported quizzes, you need to click each quiz and then click the edit button to make sure all the quiz settings are what you want. And you can also define the time limit, attempt, all the other quiz properties. Okay, that is what you need to do for each quiz imported from Blackboard. Now, another thing we imported is your assignment from, from your Blackboard space. All your assignments created using assignment tool inside Blackboard are imported into assignments link here, including all your assignment description, all your text description, they all imported in here. Okay, those are those three big uh, components we have been we have imported for you. Files and the files link, quizzes and the quizzes link, assignments and the assignments link. There's another thing we have imported because as a part of the stock migration process, that is all your grade book columns. You're going to see all the grade book columns, the title, the column title are all located also under assignments. So you may want to spend some time cleaning up your gradebook column. In Canvas, gradebook columns are controlled. This is one of the big differences between Canvas and Blackboard. Gradebook columns are controlled by the items under assignments, which means if you want to add a column in your gradebook, you need to go to assignment to add it. If you want to remove the column, you need to go to assignment link to remove them. You see, I have a lot of duplicates. They are all from my gradebook, uh, great center, gradebook inside my blackboard. So what I need to do, and you need to do, is just to hover each item and just remove them. You have to remove one by one. So you may see several total columns. You may see several clicker ID columns, several section columns. All those duplicates need to be removed. So you do need to spend some time cleaning up your gradebook. Next up, we're going to take any questions you might currently have. And then um, once June is back online, I'm going to go ahead and set up to share my desktop to show you a little bit about some of the things we have put in place for instructor support and training. Um, so in order to ask a question, you can either type in the uh, comment field in the lower left-hand corner or click on the little hand raise to let us know you want to talk, and then you can just hold down the talk key to, uh, to talk. Let's see, Jim, you said, what is the command in Canvas when moving files? There isn't specifically a command in Canvas to move files. Um, if you're in the files area and you want to import a zip, there is a little icon there to import a zip file from your local computer, or you can upload right. a single file at a time or drag and drop files. Right. There's, I don't think, no, there's no specific command. You just need to, either you drag and drop from your desktop to Canvas, or you just use that zip, uh, upload that button to upload uh, the file to Canvas. Another Jim, thing, uh, Jim, we will go ahead and um, point you to some um, in materials that we have on on doing the import. Group. Um, part of today's session won't be demonstrating the the import of a course space from from one course space to another. We will have some um, video tutorials on that very, very shortly. Yes. Uh, another thing is that because uh, there's no direct correlation, correlate, uh, correlation between those two learning management systems, we highly recommend you to attend our training workshop to get you um, started with rebuilding your course base. 
Next, uh, Deb Magic is going to talk about our training and uh, support um, opportunities here. Oh, and, uh, before Deb, you talk about that, I want to show them. Here's your, uh, if you go to ng um, dot .m dot edu, there's an instructor support. All our documentations and the video tutorials are located there. So as, as June indicated, we have a couple of locations from uh, which you will be able to access information about the um, training and support that we uh, currently have under development um, for both the migration and the, the production aspects of, of working in Canvas. The um, landing page, the home page for Canvas Elms currently is ng.elms.umd.edu. And not only can you log into Canvas from this location, this is where we are starting to upload um, a variety of documents and uh, video tutorials that we're developing. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like right now. Um, among the things that we are developing is uh, traditional instructor-led workshops. And currently, we have two of the workshop uh, handouts also available online, so that if you know that's not a convenient way or a, a good way for you to to learn about the new system, we will have sort of a, a whole view training uh, set of training materials up there for you. As a matter of fact, we are underway right now with these first two workshops. Uh, we have several of them being conducted this week and ongoing through the rest of the semester, and of course, we'll be continuing on into the spring. Um, we will be adding to this collection workshops on um, creating assessments and assignments, a workshop on managing the gradebook, a fifth workshop on um, collaboration, communication, and social media in Canvas. And right after the start of the year, we will also have a workshop on creating and managing groups. And so then out of those materials, we will start to develop much more focused uh, video tutorials on specific features um, in that uh, of, of those topics that, that might be of help to you. Um, our training classes are being conducted both in the Computer and Space Sciences building in our, our traditional faculty technology lab, as well as in um, the Keldon Library. They have set of very nice uh, training facilities on the sixth floor. And so we are also out there, um, typically on Thursdays, providing this training. And from this location, You'll be able to click on the uh, the register link to go out and take a look at the dates on which the training is being offered and to register. These these workshops are typically an hour and a half to two hours in length and, of course, are free. But uh, this doesn't necessarily work to everybody's schedule, so we are trying to develop other materials. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down on this page to show you some of the other things that we have available to you. A lot of people want to know, well, how does Canvas compare to Blackboard? So we do have a, a very nice uh, little document out there that sort of looks at the Blackboard tools that you might be familiar with and comfortable with and, and maps them into Canvas and then also sort of extols some of the, the features in Canvas that we just don't have in Blackboard. So you get a good, um, a good view of that. And then, of course, a number of materials here to support the migration process. Now, for many of you, your content has already been migrated, and you may not need to go through these additional steps for the bulk migration that June demonstrated. But you may want to know a little bit more about how to move those files with the legal, legal characters and the file names. We have a brief little tutorial on how to do that. And if you are currently using Campus Pack or Wimba, and you want to export the archives from either of those tools and then import them into Canvas so that you have some of your older content from either of those tools available to your students in a new course, 
we also have some documentation on that process. And then some other brief documents as well. Now we are continuing to build video tutorials and uh, something else that we're calling, and I have a hard time saying this, quick clips, which in a minute or less, we're trying to just show you one very, very specific um, thing to do, like how to send a message to your student or how to upload a profile picture into your Canvas profile. And that uh, body of uh, support materials will be growing over the next month or two. I also want to point out that we have um, two sample courses currently, so that if you're just trying to envision, well, how on earth am I going to put my course together, um, one of them, the Honors uh, 209E, has been constructed as a sequence of wiki pages from which the students can access assignments and quizzes and uh, have sort of a, a graphical and textual interaction with the content of the course. And then the Fire Protection Engineering sample course is built based on modules, which is a very um, bare bones structuring of links to files, assignments, quizzes, et cetera, um, and doesn't make use of a lot of um, graphical information. And so if you're trying to envision what a course might look like, you might want to take a look at those two as, as ways of um, thinking about reorganizing your course. In addition to these training materials and support documentation and webinars and videos, um, we are also more than happy to consult with you. Um, we currently have hours in a remote location in McKeldon 2113 on Wednesdays and Thursdays from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. For drop in hours, so that if you get started and that's a location on campus that is convenient to you, you can drop in on us there and we'd be happy to walk through some things with you. Or you can send an email to elms at umd.edu and let us know that you'd like to be able to try to schedule a little one on one instructional design consultation where we can look at what you did with your Blackboard course and um, help you think through how you might re-envision it in Canvas. We'd also very much like to be able to work with a body of faculty in a department or a college um, and be able to go out and, and talk a little bit about how that department or college might be using Canvas in a way that um, makes good use of everyone's time. We are sort of a limited number of people and to be able to go out and, and meet with faculty um, in their buildings where, where it was most convenient to them. We'd be very happy to um, be invited to do so and go out and, and give a good demonstration or some very targeted training. We also have colleagues in many of the colleges who have um, been very supportive in bringing Canvas on campus and um, are also very happy to do these consultations. And let me see if I can show you where that information is so that you know who this cast of characters is. You go to the help link out at ng.elm, you'll be able to see the contact information. And uh, these are the colleges right now um, who have very um, specific, have specifically requested that um, they be involved in supporting the faculty in their colleges. And so you can start with an email. Now one other place that you can find out a little bit more about the planned trainings that we have is out at the uh, Learning Technologies website. We have a calendar there, and the calendar will just list the different trainings that we have. And if there is, and as well as our um, our, our faculty brown bags and these webinars, um, just a reminder of what the topics are going to be. And if you want more information about any one of them, you can click on the link. And that will bring you to a, a short description of the, the workshop. 
and then a link right into the training at Maryland training site in order to register for a section. That's where we are right now with our, our training and support model. Um, one other place that you should look at because the Canvas folks have just worked so hard on it and it has certainly been invaluable to us in um, our learning, what we know today about Canvas is available once you log into Canvas. So let me just do that real quick. Once you've logged into Canvas in the upper right hand corner, there's a little help link. When we click on that, you'll have access to the Canvas guides. And uh, these are excellent documents, well illustrated, that will help you understand particular tools and very specific facets of tool use. And we do have guides for students, instructors, as well as some of the other roles that are available in Canvas. And uh, within a guide, all the different kinds of tools that are available in Canvas will be listed here. And if you're interested in some specifics about any one of them, there's a document on each one of those specifics. And uh, as I said, we found this invaluable as we came into Canvas um, towards the end of July and uh, needed to get um, get smart about it fairly quickly. So that's what I wanted to, to show you in terms of what we have in place now. So I'm going to go ahead and um, release my desktop and then we'll take any other questions that you might have. Okay, so do we have questions? Um, I see Jim, you're asking your course begins January 5th. They're going to need to access the materials several weeks ahead of time. Um, you will control when students have access to your course. All courses begin in an unpublished state, um, but when you are ready to share the content with those students, uh, when you publish the course, any student who has been actively enrolled at that point, I believe is going to have access to the content there. And I'll call upon my colleagues to let me know if I've got that wrong, but I believe that um, you'll, you'll be able to do so. The course space exists now, and if, if the enrollments have already begun, we will be getting um, an enrollment stream from UMEG, and uh, the students would then have access to your course. Students under, um, at, back at the um, ng.elms website, there is also a student resources button as well, and we will have um, video tutorials there. Um, for the most part, as we be get going though, we will also be encouraging students to make use of those Canvas guides for students. Um, we do not have instructor-led training um, planned for students. Finding a good way to communicate with students um, is, is, is an interesting task. I think what we'll probably do is try to communicate out to faculty what the options are for their students and go through that route. Um, we may be able to find a better way of being able to do a, a global posting to students. Um, I don't think we've thought that far ahead yet, but, but thanks for planting that seed for us. One thing we're, we're working right now, we're creating lots of student support materials, and some such as student support video tutorials to show students how to use, how to navigate in Canvas. So that uh, material should be available in, um, uh, next month, right there. We already have several things um, under the student resources area, and we, we have hired some undergraduate students to um, to help us with some of the support work we have to do, and um, it is on their list to, to do more of these training tutorials. But um, the idea of how we communicate out to students that it's there, I'm, I'm hopeful that when they go to the Elms landing page to log in, if, if they're not sure what to do next, they'll, they'll see um, in them, for themselves that you know, student resources might be a good place to start. Jane, I think you have raised a very good question. I think we are, we are going to develop a communication plan to reach 
all students to notify them we are going to use Canvas next term. Uh, we are working on that. And the folks in the business school, Jim, um, Mary and Alice and Teresa, will be very good um, allies in this effort as well. Um, if there is a, um, a, a reflector that um, the Smith School uh, manages that communicates out to all Smith School students, that might additionally be uh, a tool that you all want to use uh, to let them know, you know, hey, we're in Canvas and here's where you go to look at some of the materials that, that you may need to get some support. I will tell you, though, from the, from the pilot that we've been running this semester, the students have had minimal to no problems in Canvas. It's quite intuitive for them. And, um, you know, I think some very basic materials are going to get most students um, up and functional in Canvas very, very quickly. We are exploring the ways in which we might be able to provide um, a modest level of support between um, December 30th or December 26th and the 1st of January. Obviously, everybody here is um, also a state employee, and it is a period where the university is closed. But we do hope to have a first tier help desk that will be available via email and um, some second tier support available. Um, should people be running into any problems, but it won't be um, a fully implemented support structure such as we have Monday through Friday. I would like to thank everybody for coming to this session.